Here's Dr. Gil Lederman, New York's only Harvard-trained, triple-board-certified radiation cancer doctor. If chemo surgery or radiation isn't working or isn't tolerated when cancer and its pain and symptoms aren't getting better, seek a fresh second opinion at Radio Surgery New York's Urgent Cancer Consultants for innovative, custom-tailored cancer treatment. See our experts within one business day because we know your time and your life are precious. Our goal is proper diagnosis and effective, non-invasive outpatient treatment. Decades of leadership, first in New York with brain radio surgery, first in America with body radio surgery for cancers of the brain, body, and prostate, all custom tailored for you. Call 212 Choices, 212 Choices for a prompt appointment and free booklet DVD. Super convenient, 38th and Broadway, with most insurances, Medicare, Medicaid accepted. You're next at Radio Surgery New York. Just call 212 Choices, 212 Choices. Welcome, everybody. It's the Radio Surgery Show with Dr. Gil Lederman, MD, New York's only Harvard-trained, triple-board certified radiation oncologist who brings you the latest cancer treatment news, interviewing world-renowned cancer experts, delving to special cases, and, of course, answering your questions. I'm Rob Redstone, broadcasting from the WOR studios in the heart of New York City. And now, please welcome... Dr. Lederman. Hi, good morning. How are you? We're hoping you have a great weekend. We're here with a lot of new cases and news, a lot to talk about, and I want to talk with you about all these things. My name is Dr. Lederman from Radio Surgery New York. We're a cancer treatment center. That's all we do is treat cancer. We do treat some benign brain tumors like acoustic neuromas, meningiomas, um, and pituitary tumors. So if you have a question, please call us. Bob and Ed are running the studio today, who are fantastic. So if you have questions, call us at 1-800-321-0710. 1-800-321-0710. just want to start off on cases today. And I know you probably think I sit around and I'm a novelist. I make up these stories. But no, I couldn't do it week after week, uh, scores of cases. Uh, these are true stories, and sometimes you wonder why, but we can explore that too if you want. <clears throat> First patient I want to talk about is a 73-year-old black man with prostate cancer. He had surgery in 1996. He went to his urologist for his cancer. Since 1996, he's been impotent and incontinent. He's been wearing a diaper for the last 18 years, if you can imagine that. So since age 55 on, and it's not that uncommon. If you actually look at our booklet on, uh, I'll give you the page number. Um, we have this booklet that's available at no charge, page 14. It actually talks about symptoms after surgery, and about 97% of men have sexual problems after surgery. <coughs> Excuse me like this man who's impotent, and about 80% have urinary problems after surgery, like this man who's wearing a diaper after the surgery, incontinent for the last 18 years. And worst of all, now after surgery, his cancer is back. Uh, after surgery, a PSA should be zero, because surgery is supposed to remove all the prostate and all the cancer, so there should be nothing producing PSA in a man's body and sad to say even the cancer's back so he's had all the complications other than dying on the table he's had recurrence of the cancer he's had impotence for 18 years he's had incontinence for 18 years he's worn a diaper so for those men who think that surgery is their key to success you may want to think again or come in and look at the data which we'll share with you or we'll send you a booklet the best is really to come in so I can go over the details he's also been on vitamin D for these years so I know a lot of people think that there's magic pills that will help you well he's been on vitamin D and that didn't help his recurrence didn't help his complications so there's a lot to learn from this case number one surgery 
for many men is not a panacea. If you look at Gleason 7, for example, the success rate with surgery is 60%. With us, treatment success is 90%, 50% better. And in general, we don't have the urinary continence problem and the sexual problem that surgery has so often. So again, if you have prostate cancer, you may want to think about some options before you get caught up because once they cut those nerves, there's not a heck of a lot to do to get back urinary and sexual function. I have a new patient who came in this week also, a woman who has a cancer of the fallopian tubes called a malarian tumor, mixed malarian cancer. She's 68 years old. In 2012, she had bloating, and she was admitted for bilateral move over ovaries in her tubes. She was felt to have stage 3 gynecologic cancer with metastasis to the rectum and peritoneal wall. She recovered, and she's had chemo from September 2012 till December. Uh, she then had follow-ups, and the had recurrence of her cancer in November 2013 in the same spot. So again, it's another surgical failure, this time in a woman with a gynecologic cancer by the ovary and fallopian tube. The surgeon removed it, and the cancer came right back where it was. Why is that? Well, Probably the cancer was spread by the surgeon unknowingly. The surgeon doesn't want to spread cancer, of course, but sometimes just manipulating the cancer can cause cancer cells to shut off and then recur. She had more <coughs> chemo from December 2013 to this year, April, which was very difficult for her. She even lost consciousness from the chemotherapy, and by June there was more and more cancer found. Even the cancer was shutting off the ureter. So the kidney makes urine, and then the urine has to get to the bladder, and it gets through the bladder by the ureter. <clears throat> well, this cancer blocked off the ureter, so she has bilateral hydronephrosis, and it's hard to believe, but she saw another doctor who told her, oh, never mind. Well, the problem with hydronephrosis, when the urine backs up, is it's very corrosive to the kidney and destroys the kidney. <clears throat> now, sometimes there's doctors who say, well, if a cancer patient dies of kidney failure, that's a good way to go. I don't believe that. I don't think there's any good way to go, except if you're 120 years old. So she now has uh, pelvic pain. She has back pain. She thought her back pain was due to scoliosis. She's lost a lot of weight. She's down to 115 pounds. So she has this gynecologic cancer. We staged her up because that's what we do, and we talk about that a lot. We staged her up, and we actually found that the cancer had invaded into the spine, and that's probably why she's having the low back pain. She has uh, large masses of cancer in the pelvis. Chemo didn't work. Surgery didn't work. She has bilateral hydronephrosis. We're going to take care of the bilateral hydronephrosis immediately. We've planned her out to start treatment. We did work, actually, this weekend. So she's ready to go quickly. And we will attack those multiple masses in the pelvis and in the spine simultaneously. What is radiosurgery? Radiosurgery allows us to focus in on cancer anywhere in the body from head to toe, and I really mean from head to toe. We've treated the head and the ear and the eye and lymph nodes and lung and liver and spleen and kidney and sarcoma and melanoma, kidney cancers, even cancers of the toe. And our success rate overall is about 90% in stopping the cancer where we aim the beam. And the beauty of our treatment is it doesn't cause anything good or bad anywhere else. It's a very focused treatment, non-invasive treatment. It's called radiosurgery, but it's really a misnomer. One of our patients likes to call it radio zapping because there is no surgery, no anesthesia, no cutting. A treatment takes about 15 minutes. People come in, get a treatment, and go back to work or go home or go shopping or do what they want to do, anything but uh, be in the hospital. We, we know that is not what you want to do. And we have another patient I spoke a bit about last week, a man 
who had kidney cancer. He went to one of those big famous cancer hospitals and they removed his kidney on one side and then the next year they gave him radiation for his prostate and then a few years later they removed half of his other kidney. So he's now down to a half of a kidney. And by the way, a half of a kidney is enough. Any of us in normal health, a half is enough to sustain our life. Well, recently they told him his cancer's back in that remaining half, and they have to remove that half of kidney and put him on dialysis. And he's an 80-year-old man, great man, fantastic man, and he doesn't want to be on dialysis, and he's right. So he came for a second opinion, and we tell everybody to get a second opinion. It's in your interest. Well, guess what happened to this man in a second opinion? We staged him up. First of all, the surgery on the kidney, they removed a kidney and a half. They gave him radiation for the prostate. We staged him up. The prostate cancer is back. Their radiation didn't work. By the way, their radiation is about a third less successful than our radiation, so we have a much greater chance of curing men with prostate cancer. And we'll show you the facts. We like the facts. We staged them up, and guess what we found in the kidney that they were going to remove at this big cancer hospital? No cancer, only cysts. Can you believe it? They were going to remove his remaining half of kidney, put him on dialysis. We staged him up. They didn't do a scan for the last eight months, and they were going to remove his kidney. We staged him up with the best tests because we want to get to the bottom of it. They didn't do a PET scan. They didn't do an MRI. We did. And when we staged him up, we found there was no cancer in the kidney whatsoever. His kidney is working great. He can keep his kidney for the rest of his life and function normal, urinate normal, never need dialysis. We did, however, find that the cancer had spread to the liver, and they missed that also. So... He wants to treat the liver with radiosurgery non-invasively. He's upset that they removed a kidney and a half and their treatment didn't work. He's upset they gave him radiation for the prostate and their treatment didn't work at this big cancer hospital. Uh, we staged him up. He's got the documents. He's got the paperwork. He brought his daughter in from Maryland. We all met. We went over the details. He knows exactly what's going on. He's got copies of the documents. He can go home and read them and understand them. Yes, he's going to have his kidney. He's going to urinate. We found the kidney cancer in the liver, which we're going to hit with radiosurgery. Our success rate is very high, non-invasively, to hit those cancers without the cutting and bleeding that was proposed elsewhere. So we're going to uh, talk. take this call from New Jersey. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Oh, uh, well, I'm, uh, I'm kind of depressed one thing after the other, you know. Okay. What's your question for me today? Okay. In 2003, I had a um, mastectomy. And by the way, the mammogram and sonograms didn't catch until it was Well, mammograms out. are not perfect. The mammograms so, only show 80% of cancers. So you need physical exam, physician exam, ultrasound, mammogram, MRI. So don't. it's not uncommon. There's a quarter million women with breast cancer and mammograms are 80%. That's all, 80%. I, yeah, I had sonograms also, but then they gave me radiation on the right side. That's where it was. Okay, uh, so what's your question now? My question is that uh, later on, I got um, uh, heart. F I have uh, two years later diagnosed with a very severely leaky valve and got heart failure. Then they tell me the radiation could have caused it. Why don't you tell me before? They're very evasive about it. And I want to know that now. Uh, I, w I went under open heart surgery last year. Mm -hmm. And now I don't know whether I only want to know if it caused it so I could tell the oncologist if I have to get in the other breast. Now I notice in my blood the Creatinine, I mean, is every it, it, not the creatinine. The calcium is ten point four, which never was, and a parathyroid hormone is sixty two. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know. The internet says that always means I have a tumor in a parathyroid when it's that much. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's what I'm asking you. Well, number one, I was the first one to describe 
adverse heart effects from radiation. They never Where, tell me. Mm. Well, I'm telling you, I'm the first one, and you can look up the data. If you call our office during the 